Welcome back to the second part of this lecture. In case the whole contact area is still in adhesion, or one could also say it is sticking, the longitudinal force is given by Hooke's law. We can determine the longitudinal force by integrating the local shear stress tau of x from the point minus a, where the brush element leaves the contact patch, to point a, where the element enters the contact patch. This results in the longitudinal force to be proportional to the longitudinal slip sigma x by the factor 2 times the square of a times the bristle stiffness cp. This proportional factor is called the longitudinal slip stiffness cx. It can also be described by the partial derivative of fx by the longitudinal slip for a longitudinal slip value of 0. On the left side, the longitudinal force that is calculated by the brush model for the case of full adhesion is shown in blue. In comparison, a measured or experimental longitudinal force of a tire is shown in red. For small values of the longitudinal slip, both curves show good agreement. However, with increasing slip angles, the brush model with pure adhesion deviates from experimental data. As a next step, we consider that there is a friction limit in the contact patch, given by the maximum static coefficient of friction mu s. The local stress tau in the contact patch is now defined in dependency of the variable x as shown here. We have to separate in two areas. In the area where the elastic stress due to adhesion is below or equal to the static friction limit stress tau max. The local stress tau is given by Cp times longitudinal slip. Sigma x times the parenthesis A minus x. In the second area, the local stress is limited by the static friction limit. The stress tau max due to the static friction limit is proportional to mu s and the contact pressure distribution qz of x. For now, we assume the pressure distribution to be constant in the contact patch, which is shown by the green curve. Thus, tau max shown in the orange curve is also constant in x direction of the contact patch. The resulting stress tau of x is shown by the light blue area. The resulting longitudinal force fx is a combination of two parts. First, the force due to elastic stress in the area where the brush elements stick to the road. This area goes from point xp to point a, where the element enters the road. Second, the force in the slipping area that is limited by the static friction. This area goes from point minus a to point xb. To find the longitudinal force, the integral has to be split at the coordinate xb, where the local stress tau is equal to the elastic stress due to adhesion. This point b is shown in the figure on the right side. The coordinate xb of point b is the position where the local stress tau due to adhesion is equal to the maximum stress tau max limited by the friction. In other words, it is the point where the stress due to brush elements sticking is equal to sliding. Tau max is the static friction mu s times the pressure distribution qz and equals mu s times the vertical force divided by 2a. Replacing the x in the second equation by xb, we can rearrange for xb, which is now a function of the static friction limit mu s, the vertical load fz, half the length of the contact patch a, the bristle stiffness cp, and the longitudinal slip sigma x. Since the position of B can now be described, the integral can be solved. This results in the equation shown for the sticking and the sliding area in the second line. The resulting expression for the longitudinal force is shown in the equation below. 
without distinguishing in sticking and sliding proportions. The first elements in the contact patch start to slide when the value of xb is higher than minus a. In the figure shown, this means that point b is on the right side of position minus a in longitudinal direction. The position of xb depends on the slip value. Therefore, a corresponding sliding slip called sigma axis l can be calculated. It describes the value just before sliding starts. For all slip values higher than sigma axis l, there is an area in the contact patch where the brush elements are sliding. On the left side, the maximum stress due to the static friction limit is shown by the orange line. The adhesive stress tau is again the area under the blue lines, which is now shown for four different values of the longitudinal slip. With increasing longitudinal slip, as mentioned before, the point xb is moving in direction where the brush elements enter the contact patch. As a consequence, the sliding area of the contact patch increases, which is also shown in red below the schematic tire. As a result of all of these considerations, the whole characteristics of the longitudinal force with respect to the longitudinal slip can be described with the brush tire model. To achieve this, the force value is calculated for different values of the longitudinal slip. Both positive and negative longitudinal forces can occur in the tire when a vehicle is accelerating or braking. This is considered by the signum function of the longitudinal slip in this definition. When only considering full adhesion in the contact patch, the resulting longitudinal force has a linear dependency on the longitudinal slip. This is shown in the figure with the blue line. The red curve shows the modeled longitudinal tire force from the brush model that also considers sliding in the contact patch. With the assumptions made so far, the longitudinal force from the brush model remains constant with a certain longitudinal slip. When comparing the red curve from the brush model to measure characteristics shown in purple, it can be seen that the saturation of the measured characteristics with increasing longitudinal slip is not accurately modeled. In the next lecture, we will see that with different assumptions, this deviation at higher slip angles can be reduced in the brush model. The longitudinal force characteristics shown in the last figure is valid for a constant vertical force or load. In the brush model, as we derived it in this lecture, the influence of the vertical force is a linear one. This means that when doubling the load on the tire, the resulting longitudinal force is also doubling. In reality, the vertical force shows a degressive influence. This means that with increasing vertical force, the resulting longitudinal force increases too but to a lesser extent. The main reason for this behavior are that the contact patch size and the pressure distribution in the contact patch do not change in a linear manner with the vertical load. This concludes the force transmission in longitudinal direction for now. Next, we consider the force transmission in lateral direction. In contrast to the vertical force, however, There are many similarities in the force transmission between longitudinal and lateral direction.